Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from England. I have the Filet B. I have the STR Finish Yorkshire Single Malt Whiskey, 46%, non-chill filtered, no color added. So this is whiskey base number 161554. Look at this color, isn't that beautiful? 65 euros 90 at the moment. I was told online that this was actually, um, I might be wrong, but I hope I'm right. Um, first of all, they were first filled bourbon casks that were used, and then it, be, it received a finish in STR casks. How long? Didn't say. I couldn't find anything. So Tom um, Miller and David Thompson started this company, and the first of all, they knew we don't know much about distilling. Who do we contact? An expert in the field was Dr. Jim Swan back then. The distillery opened basically in May 2017, sorry, 2016, and Dr. Jim Swan died 2017 unexpectedly. All right, so what do we have here? Shaved, toasted, recharred, STR, shaved. You take a red wine, maybe a hogshead, 250 um, liters, and you actually, first of all, remove the ends. So it still has to be held together by the rings, no problem. And then you take a mechanical device and you shave off the first maybe, I'm going to say, quarter inch, half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch from that wood. So before it was charred, and so you get rid of all that, you shave it off, and the wine-soaked wood turns into a mixture of the wine-soaked wood with virgin on top of it, virgin oak, which is perfect. So you get a virgin oak because it's newly cut, and you still have a little bit of the wine influence in that red wine fluence, so you get a nice color as well. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Then you actually take some wood chips, you put them in there, or you take a, um, a you put them in a certain temperature, and you heat up the inside of the barrels, um, you, and you actually caramelize the sugars and the vanillin that are in there into something beautiful. And then you take the flamethrower, and you throw the flame into the barrel and you char the insides shaved toasted recharred boom these are old uh, portuguese red wine casks and dr jim swan actually um, invented or helped invent this process the guy is a smart guy i mean come on he actually started in 1974 the penton scotch whiskey research limited which later on became the scotch whiskey research institute he was the guy who actually created the first flavor wheel, 1979, first Scotch whiskey that we use today. This guy, Dr. Jim Swan, actually helped us do a lot and actually helped us to really understand whiskey. He studied chemistry, he studied biology, and he was a passionate whiskey expert. And he was really someone who helped develop the aromas at many, many different distilleries. Cavalan, Kilholman, um, Coswolds, Annandale, um, here, the Yorkshire, Spirit of Yorkshire um, Distillery, and, 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 and. So what am I going to do? I'm going to compare it to our flagship. So there was a first, there was a second, and now the third release is just called Flagship. So um, what I want to do in a second is pull out the second release. I just want to show something um, to illustrate what I thought was really, really cool, all right? So it has to do with the color. Let me pour a little bit in this so it can have a moment in the glass. All right, so pulling out here my second release. So doing a little bit of magic tricks here using paper, white paper, nothing else. Boom, 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 look at this. So we have the STR here. We have the second, um, sorry, the flagship here. And we have the second release in the middle. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful description of what color, what casks can do to color? I think this is just amazing. I love that. All the same distillery, all the same distillate, just different casks. Wow. I am, I'm kind of awed by that, yeah? Um, so, very, very nice. Now, um, STRs do have the advantage that they often help um, uh, whiskey to age faster. Just let's put it as it is. It's a little bit like a turbo for whiskey. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Did you know there's a compressor that actually puts more air into the turbo than actually would be physically possible? And then for the compressor, you actually have to cool the compressor to get enough air because it heats up. Um, 
why am I saying this? My son works as a tune, tuning expert at a car company, and um, I get to listen to him all the time talk about the different things they're doing. All right, so this is the flagship design. This is the STR design. You do notice some similarities. I really like the packaging here. Whoever did it, well done. All right, on the nose, I'm getting berries. I'm getting forest berries. It's like a, um, uh, it's not a cranberry. It's like a currant, a red currant, not a black currant. It's like a raspberry. It's like a um, red plum. There's all these nice red berries in there. I don't know if you've had a red berry juice, but we have that over here in Germany. And they put all these berries into that, maybe a little bit of currant in there, a little tart, but not that tartness is here. And the thing is, this is not exactly at its, um, at the climax, at the zenith, zenith of its um, highest fruitiness, the sweetness. This is like one or two weeks before that. So it's almost ripe, but not yet perfectly ripe. I get a little bit of a, um, of a vanilla, and I get a nice, nice little sweet little wood moment at the back. It says here, light, floral, and fruity with notes of summer berries. Got it. Vanilla ice cream. Don't got it. Orange chocolate. Didn't get that either. And um, toasted oak. Okay. Shave, toasted, and recharged red wine casks finish our field to glass whiskey in another exciting first Fifillet Bay, our STR finish release. All right, so they actually produce their own um, barley. It's sent over then to um, be malted. And then um, our friend and our co founder here, I need the names here once again, I'm sorry. Um, Tom actually has his own brewery and makes then the wort. All right, let's do this. Let's enjoy this. Cheers. a little bit of a mineral moment in there. The STR, oh, is that, that, that red wine cask moment pulls the whiskey up. This one goes like this. It goes, and here it just goes. It's almost as if um, the whiskey wants to go downhill, but then the STR goes, no, you're not. Yes, I know you're not. <laughs> it just keeps on supporting, keeps on pushing, keeps on um, being a pillar here for this whiskey. That's good. That's good. It's a C good. It's not a C plus. If I was blind, folded, and tried this for the first time, I would taste it and go, oh, that's an okay whiskey. Um, one, why haven't you bought it? Two, buy it. Three, you can buy it if you want to. Four, you don't need to buy it. Five, why was it even made? Um, so it's A, B, C, D, F. All right. So A, why haven't you bought it? B, buy it. C, you can buy it if you want. D, you don't need to buy it. F, why was it even made? Um, one, two, three, four, five is what we use in Germany. That's why I was confused for a second. It's a very okay, good whiskey. Nothing here where I'm going to write home about and say, hey, great, great stuff, but it's actually good. It is the best um, from the distillery I've had so far. I do have one left. I have a muscatel left. Let's see if this is even better. Could be, could not be. I'm not sure. Um, just really, really briefly going over to my second release. Really, really quickly going over to my flagship release. Second release is on the floor already. This starts off higher. I like this better. The bourbon, the sweetness, the silkiness, the niceness of this whiskey is really there. But then that finish is just kind of um, just ruins it for me. Um, I hate it when a whiskey goes, oh, I'm nice, I'm nice. No, I'm not. Um, uh, so I did give this a C minus. I did give the second release a C minus minus. Should have been a D plus. Um, and this is a solid C. Value for money, it's a D. I cannot recommend spending 66 euros on this bottle. I can get um, many other bottles for that price um, that I like. Um, yes, it is a new distillery. Yes, SDR casks are a little bit expensive. Yes, it is something we should support and something we should actually invest in if you want. I personally believe that more of the distillery should... Um, now, do not 
skin or do not tar and feather me for this. I believe some of the younger distilleries should build up a base of fans around the distilleries before they go international. Um, well, if you have enough, if you have enough stock, do it. But if you don't, you don't. Okay, um, I went online. I looked real quickly once again here. SDR finish 2016 is the vintage. 2020 is the bottling, so four years old. Um, not first fill bourbon, but just rather bourbon cask. An STR red wine barriques finish, and everyone's talking about Rioja casks. Um, Rioja is usually in Spain, and so um, it might actually not be Portuguese, which usually the SDR is, but rather a Spanish. Ooh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Spanish Rioja um, SDR casks. Good. Still, um, value for money is not really my cup of tea. In England, it is a tiny little bit cheaper, but not by much. Um, it's 58 pounds there. Over here, it's 67 euros. So with exchange rate and whatever else, it's almost the same. All right, so if you find it, you can try it, but this is not definitely a buy recommendation. This is a try it before you buy it um, recommendation. Thank you very much. I have no idea if um, even the distillery has made it to the States yet. They're in, um, according to my information, at least in Germany, they're in France, and they're in the UK, so that's great. So let's see where else they'll be in the future. Whiskey Jason here. Please like, subscribe, tell others. And um, what is your favorite STR cask expression? What is it? Is it... Um, Kim Holman, is it something else? Um, please write it down in the comments. That would be great. Bye-bye.